Get ready to be blown away by the impressive ways filmmakers manage to genuinely, well, blow actors away. And marvel at the way Marvel Studios were able to convince you a character was present through some mesmerizing non-digital effects. Gareth here from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 more epic movie moments you won't believe didn't use CGI. Number 10. Nebula carried a dummy Peter Quill during the opening, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Early on in the third and final volume in the Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy, a rather drunk Peter Quill is carried to bed by Nebula after passing out once again. And while you may assume that this sort of epic opening visual of the gang all walking through nowhere to the sound of an acoustic version of Radiohead's Creep could only be achieved through some either impressive wirework or CGI wizardry, you'd be wrong. James Gunn actually had the brilliant team over at Legacy FX create a fully believable stand-in style Lord that weighed only 35 pounds. This meant that Karen Gillan could very much carry what looked like Chris Pratt's Guardian during that emotional opening stretch when shooting the moment on set. Number 9. The Trinity Test was made from real explosions and experiments. Oppenheimer. Though the average filmmaker may have found it tough to resist the urge to unleash the most staggering digitally created explosion imaginable, when it came time to bring the Trinity test to screen in this year's Oppenheimer, Christopher Nolan had other ideas. While visual effects were actually used to layer the various shots of smoke and explosions to create the final mind-blowing visual of the detonation of the first atom bomb, the actual shots themselves were all created without CGI. For one of the largest explosions the team captured on camera to use in that incredible big screen moment, the film's VFX supervisor Andrew Jackson would note how they used four 44-gallon drums of fuel and then some high explosives under that, which sets the fuel alight and launches it into the air. The team also used other forms of trickery to create a practical version of this epic blast, with the movie cinematographer Hoyt Van Hoytema explaining to Variety that experiments involving aquariums with power in it having silver particles dropped in them, smashing ping pong balls together, and more were all used to figure out how to make this massive bomb drop a big screen reality. Number 8. Ethan actually fights Gabriel on top of a train. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Tom Cruise's latest performance as Ethan Hunt in Dead Reckoning Part 1 boasted more than a few insane moments that made you understandably question whether what you were watching was made with some CGI assistance or 100% the real deal. And when it comes to the fight between the leading man and Hunt's latest adversary Gabriel on top of a moving train, behind the scenes footage would ultimately reveal that Cruise once again opted to pull off this stunt for real. Because of course he did. With the specially built vehicle moving at up to 60 miles per hour during the shooting of the high-speed fisticuffs, Cruz's on-screen rival, Asay Morales, would explain how the filming of the dangerous fight was trial by fire. Knowing Cruz, though, the fact that he managed to actually successfully execute this thrilling battle atop a speeding train will only inspire him and director Christopher McQuarrie to raise the stakes even more in part two. Number seven, that tank's destruction was very real, Fast and Furious 6. During the sixth increasingly balmy entry in the Fast franchise, Vin Diesel's Dom and his team find themselves up against a tank taken over by Luke Evans' Owen Shaw. But instead of crafting a CGI monster vehicle and having it wipe out digital vehicles, the folks behind the picture decided to use the real deal and have it bulldoze some actual cars on some Canary Island roads. This wasn't actually your average speeding doom machine, though. The team redesigned a Chieftain World War II tank to take its top speed up from 30 miles per hour to over 60 miles per hour, and were given permission to completely wreck a brand new highway by the Tenerife and Gran Canaria government. Roads were pulverized, a ton of cars were completely flattened by the monstrous speeding vehicle, and the tank was even shot out of the back of a truck practically. Simply put, very little of this destruction was digital. Number 6. Chris Hemsworth was very much set on fire. Extraction 2. 
While many actors would have likely been happy to simply thump their way through a set full of baddies and have a bunch of flames added to their person in post, this Australian sensation let director Sam Hargrave actually set him on fire during the shooting of the prison sequence in Extraction 2. That's right, you are very much watching Big Chris Hemsworth unleash many a right hook with a genuinely blazing arm here. With Hemsworth's Tyler Rake punching his way through various swinging foes, the Black Ops mercenary eventually finds himself being set on fire fire by a nearby explosion, but that still can't stop him from kicking all of the ass. Hargrave would eventually tell Games Radar that Hemsworth ended up being set on fire a whopping seven or eight times on set, with the director noting how it was amazing visually to watch. It didn't look half bad in the fiery finished article either. Number 5. Most of the Spitfire action was shot with real World War II planes. Dunkirk Returning to the practical world of Christopher Nolan now, and to that time when the world-class director decided he didn't want to use CGI planes or green screens to create the riveting dogfight eventually seen in his 2017 World War II epic, Dunkirk. Instead, the decision was made to mount an IMAX camera onto the wing of a Yak-52 two-seater Soviet-era plane, dress that up so it looked just like a Spitfire, and have that soar up into the air and very much capture the reactions of the likes of Tom Hardy and Jack Loudon's Spitfire pilots. The crew would extensively rehearse the aerial sequences on the ground before both the actor involved and aerial coordinator Craig Hosking would get up in the sky to shoot a no doubt terrifying half hour sortie. Nolan would even add that most of the Spitfire action seen in the finished flick was actually done by the real working World War II planes too. And to capture those moments of the genuine Spitfires speeding through the sky, a Piper Aerostar was fitted with an IMAX camera on the front and back and sent up with them, with this view throwing the audience right into the middle of these spectacular and realistic dogfight sequences. Number 4. John Wick's fall down the stairs was executed by a stunt person. John Wick Chapter 4. As Mr. Wick attempts to make his way up the Rue Fouillatier, that is my attempt at French and I'm sticking to it, and get to his duel with the Marquise in time, the master assassin runs into a number of trained killers and ends up taking one hell of a tumble. But if you thought that ridiculously painful fall was achieved through CGI, well, you better think again. As revealed by director Chad Stahelski in a chat with Collider about Chapter 4 and that exciting moment on the steps, every single fall down each and every step in this moment was performed by some fearless stunts people. Even the mother of all stair falls that Keanu Reeves' Baba Yaga experiences midway through the grueling fight was done for real, with Stahelski noting how Vincent Bouillon, Reeves' stunt double, genuinely did all that rolling on the day. And he did it bloody twice, with the only digital effects used during that moment being the ones used to erase the camera that was tracking him down the 220 steps of pain. Number 3. That pencil trick was achieved via a few KOs and some editing, The Dark Knight. With this once again being a Christopher Nolan picture, it shouldn't really come as a surprise to learn that the Joker's horrifying pencil trick was once again done without computer-generated assistance. Despite it being relatively easy to create a CG pencil for someone to have their head slammed into, according to the movie's VFX supervisor Nick Davis, the fact the team was shooting with IMAX cameras meant that they wanted to keep from using unnecessary visual effects shots, as digitally you can never really recreate an IMAX image. So after two days and 22 takes, with some of them involving stuntman Charles Jarman having to yank the pencil away quickly before his head smacked off the table, Nolan was able to get his shot, with production designer Nathan Crowley adding that, at the end of the day, you just shoot it twice, one with the pencil and one without the pencil. Then the edit does its magic. Doing things practically can have its downsides though, as Jarman would also note that he ended up knocking himself out on three separate occasions when trying to pull off the rapid stunt on two different kinds of table. Number 2. Barbie's legs were real in that epic opening, Barbie. The entire planet was gripped by the first look at what would eventually become one of the biggest films of 2023, with Margot Robbie's Barbie towering above a group of fascinated little girls in a hilarious parody of 2001 A Space Odyssey during the movie's first teaser trailer. But what you may not have been aware of is the fact that those unmistakable Barbie legs the youngsters are seen touching and gathered around during the eventual opening scene weren't actually as computer-generated as they looked. 
The billion dollar film's production designer, Sarah Greenwood, would reveal to the New York Times Kyle Buchanan that those limbs were completely real. The team actually scaled up Robbie's own legs for the epic moment and fully made them so that the kids on set could very much interact with them in what would become one of the most iconic shots of the entire flick. Number 1. A universe jump was done with a leaf blower. Everything, everywhere, all at once. There are a ton of brilliant pieces of CGI sprinkled throughout the multiverse magic seen in the Daniels Everything Everywhere All at Once, with visual effects brilliantly being used to fire Michelle Yeoh's Evelyn through a ton of universes, for example. However, the first time Yeoh's character was sent hurtling across the multiverse in the flick, the team actually decided to go with a more practical option. With Evelyn's first universe jump coming in an office space, the Daniels told Wired that they were able to shoot the moment 100% practical. Cranking open the shutter to create the streak scene as she flies backwards, and pushing her very slowly through the office while the star was freaking out in slow motion. They were also able to hide a leaf blower behind the eventual Oscar winner, making it look like she was believably shooting through a space at speed. The gang then simply sped up the footage, and the first of many epic universe jumps was born. And that's our list. Know of any other epic movie moments people won't believe didn't use CGI? Well, let us know all about them in the comments section right down below. And don't forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're down there. Also, if you're a fan of this sort of stuff, then please head on over to whatculture.com and find some more fantastic articles just like the one this video you're watching right now is based on. I've been Practical Gareth from whatculture.com. Thank you, as always, for watching this lovely video today. Hopefully, we'll see you soon. But in the meantime, just be good to yourself. Bye-bye.